Hi everyone. Good evening. We're just going to wait for everyone to come in. Hi, hi Sunil. Good evening. Hey, hi. Hi, Dr. Sanjeev. Yeah, hi Sunil. Sunil, we're just going to wait about a few minutes, let everyone join in. Okay. And uh, we'll just start. Yeah, just give me two, okay. two, two okay. minutes. Okay, so we have a few people coming in. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Today, we're going to start in about five minutes. We're going to let everyone come in first, and then we'll talk, yeah? Okay. So we're going to start in about one minute. We're just going to wait for everyone to come in. So everyone, uh, welcome to uh, Rampal Surgery and Instagram uh, live session. We're going to start in about a minute. And uh, we are based in Kuala Lumpur here. And today we are having a good friend of mine, uh, Mr. Sunil Singh from uh, United Sikhs. Uh, we'll start in about a minute officially and um, we just wait for everyone to come in yeah so now you can hear me you're good yes loud and clear excellent so we're going to start now and uh, so basically welcome everyone and uh, thank you for joining us on Rampal Surgery Instagram live session. Today uh, we're having, uh, we're having, uh, we have an opportunity to host uh, uh, a great, a great uh, friend of mine and also a good humanitarian. And he represents an NGO that's been uh, doing a lot of good work, a lot of humanitarian work, a lot of work um, uh, on the background uh, regarding uh, one of the NGOs that's uh, based here in Kuala Lumpur. So we're gonna we're gonna have a little chat with him regarding uh, United Sikhs uh, Malaysia. Uh, United Sikhs is uh, an NGO that's based in uh, uh, based internationally and they are based locally for around uh, now 14 years. And uh, I'll let I'll let our our uh, distinguished guest uh, go on with his uh, introduction. But basically. The pandemic has affected us all uh, economically, socially, and mentally, and physically also. Different stratas of uh, our society is affected by this. And when we talk about uh, health uh, as a whole uh, on this channel, we, we like to include it as a wholesome or holistic approach where we consider uh, mental health, uh, physical and financially also contributes to uh, overall, overall health of patients. Yeah, so I'm Dr. Sanjeev Rampal. Uh, I'm an orthopedic surgeon, and this is uh, Rampal Surgery on Instagram Live. So today we, are, we have an opportunity to be joined by uh, Mr. Sunil Singh, uh, who is the president of United Sikhs Malaysia. Their headquarters is in Sati Alam. I was, uh, I was there at the headquarters for the first time uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we did some activities. So now, uh, regarding United Sikhs, they have done a magnificent job on the background. And they they've been highlighted for their activities, but uh, not 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 as I think there's there's about a thousand thousand percent less than what they should be getting credit for. Um, they 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 work in a lot a lot of things in the background, and so today I thought I I invite Mr. Sunil Singh to uh, join us, and maybe he can tell us a little bit more about uh, what United Six are doing, uh, humanitarian food bank. They also have a medical team, but the medical team will probably have uh, them on. 
uh, them on this channel a little later in the year. Yeah. So I'd like to welcome everyone again. And uh, well, uh, well, Mr. Sunil Singh, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, as as uh, as the president of United Sikhs, uh, I'd like to congratulate what you and your team has been doing. You all been doing magnificent work, and uh, a lot of things is a lot of things that people don't realize that you guys are doing. You guys uh, established the first food bank, and uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of efforts. So let's let's go go straight into it, uh, Dr. Sunil. I mean, Mr. Sunil, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit and? Maybe uh, tell us a little bit more about you and your organization, United Seeks. Uh, thank you, doctor. Uh, so, firstly, I'm not a doctor. So, yes, uh, sleep of yeah. the tongue, but uh, yeah, uh, it was always my dream to be a doctor anyway. So, um, so thank you so much for having and hosting us uh, on this channel, um, Dr. Sanjeev. The, uh, I am representing uh, not myself here as, a, as an NGO called United Seeks Malaysia. We are actually a, a, a non a, a organization for not for, for not for profit, yeah. And we currently are doing uh, multiple items and multiple initiatives uh, throughout. Um, so we, in a way, we have two wings. One is the national wing, which is the Malaysian wing, and the other one is the international wing. So, for example, I'll give an example. Uh, in the international wing portion, we recently sent 10 concentrators to Indonesia. That was about uh, 10 days ago. And about two months ago, we sent concentrators from Malaysia. Uh, we basically sponsored the concentrators in India to help in the, under the Help India Breathe uh, program. So, so, yeah, so we are basically an organization that is uh, international, has chapters everywhere in the world. And every chapter is an independent chapter uh, in the individual country uh, run by a set of uh, a board of directors, if you like. Yeah. So, um, yeah, thank you, you so much. Uh, so, uh, uh, you, you guys have been locally present for how many years? And what are your main, uh, main, uh, main activities? So uh, our first uh, project was actually during the 2004 uh, tsunami, Ache tsunami. Uh, that was when the first uh, project uh, that was actually mobilized from Malaysia to help Ache. And uh, that program was actually spearheaded by United Six as well. And uh, from there onwards, uh, basically, uh, United Six are present in, in generally, mostly most of the disasters everywhere in the world. Uh, and regionally, in this region, in Asia region, we had the Philippines, we had the Myanmar, Nargis, uh, we had the earthquake in Pakistan, uh, we had uh, also the, the other Aceh tsunami, uh, we had the Jakarta earthquake, and, uh, and, and multiple flood, uh, flood um, uh, you know, initiatives that we did. Basically, in our homeland, we had the Kelantan floods, and the Kelantan floods was basically to, and the Johor floods, and the Pahang floods, we had a few floods in, in the country. And as, a, as an NGO, uh, basically, uh, currently what we are doing now, as, as we speak, in the last 18 months since the MCO1, uh, we have uh, double, triple, quadrupled our efforts to try to reach out uh, to the people of Malaysia to make sure that the people of Malaysia are taken care of. Uh, so the initiatives that we, we ran since uh, last year has been uh, the food aid uh, initiatives, which basically we are actually giving aid to uh, people, uh, anybody. So uh, you know, so our motto is uh, recognize the human race as one. So as an organization that recognizes the human race as one, we basically serve the Indians, the Malays, the Chinese, the, 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 the Sikhs, and even the people who are migrants in the country, uh, we basically serve all. Yeah. Uh, That's it. And, uh, yeah. So, um, so we, we basically run a, a call center and that, that call, call place becomes a place that people can call and request for, for food. And uh, recently, you know, the Bandera Pute uh, um, act, yeah. uh, activity that has happened. So the, in the Bandera Pute activity, our, our affiliate organization, which is Malaysian Food Bank, and, and, and I, must, I must say that, you know, we need to get the president of Malaysian Food Bank also onto this call one day uh, soon. 
and Malaysia Food Bank and us are basically you know we work very hand in hand. Malaysia Food Bank is the is the arm that looks after the food aid uh, uh, initiatives in the country. Yeah, but last year uh, together with the United States, actually we uh, you know we ran the um, the a one week drive through in Titi Mangsa Gurdwara there uh, at the front of the Gurdwara. And there we had a seven thousand. We served seven thousand five hundred families in one week. Yeah, every day there was a there was about two hours of uh, allowing people to just pass by in the front, and they just come park their car, uh, you know, without stopping their car, and then you basically put the goodies inside, and then they are they are off. So, so uh, uh, Mr. Sunil, uh, you were saying about the white flag and the food aid. So, how would would one person, if if they are on here or they will watch this, how can they can they apply for this white flag or some some aid to be by by the United States? Like, how does it really work for them? I mean, how could they reach out to you guys? Yeah. So, uh, I think first thing you, you need to do is uh, we we have an Instagram page. Uh, United States Malaysia has an Instagram page. We also have a Facebook page. And uh, you'll actually on our Facebook page, you actually find all the hotlines. So there's a food MCO 3.0 hotline, which is basically the hotline that you can, you can call WhatsApp and say, "I need food," and 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 that would be one channel. The other channel is uh, weekends. We actually uh, take our pickup truck filled with food, and we basically drive around certain certain areas. And wherever we go, whenever we see a white flag, we basically stop by, give to those those people who in need, who have basically called us. And uh, and we serve in that way. And and who provides for this? Uh, for this, uh, what, what what do y'all actually give? Uh, maybe a little idea about yeah. actually because I so, so very much very much staple food, doctor. Very much staple food. Yeah. So in these times, uh, luxury is uh, is is not is not the, the name of the game. Yeah. So we're looking at really staple. So we give rice, we give uh, flour, we give uh, sugar, salt, oil. We give a mihun, a pack of mihun, and then we give baked beans. Uh, we give uh, even um, uh, you know susu chap junjong, the condensed milk, uh, and sometimes we give even boti. And for some other items, we actually sometimes we get also um, dal's lentils, and we give lentils as well uh, uh, in the pack. That, that that's just great. And and who came up with this uh, with this list, uh, Mr. Sunil? Based on experience as well, uh, these are in a way it's universal list. So in all the communities, uh, this will be something that everybody will use. So it's not specific to one community versus the other. So everybody would use all of those items, and that's how we came up with the list. That's fantastic. So what about uh, your project, your other projects like uh, Home yeah. COVID Care Initiative and the Oxygen uh, uh, previous Oxygen Concentrate Project? Yeah, can you give yes. us a little? Yes, so the home COVID care uh, is actually a initiative that's led by our medical director, United States Medical Director, Dr. Simon, and uh, and Dr. Sanji for saying that you know she will also come on this program later on. So the I'll just give you a broad overview so that she can give you the details. So the 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 medical the home COVID care is actually a program that allows us allows public who have who are infected with COVID number one, and uh, who current cannot afford. Uh, you know, uh, medical equipment like a concentrator and oximeter uh, and, a, and an oxygen bag cannot afford a home sanitization. So these are all the services that we actually provide to those people who cannot afford so that you, first of all, you don't feel alone. You don't feel, don't feel the pressure that, you know, I, I wonder what am I going to do? So just call our medical helpline and we are there to serve you and make sure that you are taken care of. So all those people who need a concentrator, they can't, you know, uh, first thing you'll actually do is you'll send them a oximeter so that they can start getting the oxygen saturation points and, and how bad, uh, you know, their oxygen levels are. And, and that's very, very key. And the minute the oxygen level goes to a dangerous level, we either advise them to uh, head to the hospital, which is, a, which is a must. And those people who are in the borderline, we then, according to a, doc with, with a doctor's prescription, we actually provide oxygen concentrators to their home and then okay. they basically get some oxygen kind of support uh, for the, the difficulty in breathing. 
And that's excellent. And uh, roughly around how many, Sunil? Uh, uh, how many, Sunil? Like so like currently, how... currently an... we have 20 oxygen concentrators in circulation. And we, are, we have okay. run short of it, actually. And the last one week, uh, you know, we are, we are running short of it. And we are still topping up with another 30 con con oxygen concentrators as we speak, which will, should be arriving here by Friday and Sunday in two batches. And, and uh, so that we can continue to serve the people. And the cost is of, for all these concentrators. So uh, all of this is donors. Or you guys... So first of all, to the people who receive this, it's free of cost. Uh, you don't have to pay for anything. Um, and and how do we how do we get how do we get that kind of uh, you know uh, donations? It's actually from the public. The public has recognized uh, you know or, or sees uh, some good work, and I guess they're a little bit more. Uh, uh, merciful to us and say that, okay, maybe we give you some support and, and that's what we have been doing. And thank you to all the donors out there who's got the confidence in the United States to, to perform this service. Uh, yeah, I, so, and, the, and the last piece of this service is even for some people who don't need a oxygen concentrator doctor, but yeah. you know, after a home has been infected with COVID, the, the thing that you need before you can get people coming into the home is a sanitization. And so, and we saw that as a, as a problem for people, they cannot afford. So what we did is we actually had, a, we have a team now of five people that actually go home by home and sanitize. So people just have to call us and say, I cannot afford, can you come and sanitize? And it's already 14 days post your COVID uh, in, from the time of infection. Uh, we actually then go in and sanitize the place and make it ready for the home to be called a home again. Yeah. And and I've seen all this all these things in the newspapers. We saw uh, we saw in newspapers and also on YouTube about your activities of sending concentrators to Indonesia, and uh, via the, uh, the initiative with Mars MAS, and also yes. your other uh, other projects. Uh, Mrs. Zuno, uh, one more one more project that you uh, you, you previously was uh, engaged in is the education aid. Yeah, Correct. because Correct. them are. Affected by the education has been affected by uh, by the pandemic. So, would you like to tell us a little bit more about that? So, the education aid is uh, purely to so that the, those people who have to be like all of us are working from home, uh, same the same way the children are also have to study from home, and the many families who hardly you know barely are putting food on the table. And, uh, you know, a, a laptop or a desktop uh, for the child is uh, not in the highest priority. So in, in this case, we actually launched an education aid uh, fund that we basically are going to sponsor. Uh, currently, we have 80 people in our list. Uh, and that 80 is to basically to those people who cannot afford and would like a laptop. And we're providing a laptop. Why a laptop? Because a laptop can be something that they can use later on going to college, going to school. Uh, going to tuition uh, and, and going to your homes, uh, your friend's house to study together. So it becomes a bit more mobile. And, uh, and, and we are using refurbished laptops, good condition refurbished laptops, so that uh, we can actually support a bigger group of people. Yeah, so, so Mr. Sunil, if there's someone in, in, uh, who's watching today and would like to contribute by giving them the laptop, what what uh, uh, how would you advise? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, donate the laptop to your foundation or to your NGO. How how would they go about it? Currently, what we have done is uh, we have at least secured a. Sorry, this is a little bit of intermittent. Uh, so basically, what we are doing is we actually we have sourced a secondhand refurbished uh, laptops, and uh, we've told them to to basically you know hold it uh, until we get the funding. And uh, those people who like to fund a child, uh, please, uh, you know, follow us on Facebook. Uh, all the information is there. It's 1,150 ringgit. And a child will get a laptop, a bag, uh, you know, a mouse. It's going to get the uh, Microsoft Office installed on the laptop. And they're going to get their earphone so that they can go for the class. Uh, and it's going to be ready for them. So uh, till date, we, we just launched it two days ago. We have managed to secure about 11 laptops have already been uh, sponsored. Uh, we are still far away from our target of 80. So please, uh, you know, I, I think uh, depriving our children from education is, is like pulling out a fish out of the water. So we need, and they will die. So it's not good for our future generation. Education is going to be key. And, and in today's world, 
uh, in the internet world, not having a, a computer, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not known anymore. Everybody has a computer because, you know, Mr. Google is there and it helps people to learn and edu educate themselves. So, so for sure, I think we need to equip our people uh, with laptops. And, uh, and that will be something that uh, we would urge everybody to definitely support because that's key. So, uh, Mr. Sunil, now just a few more, a few more uh, topics here. One thing is because with your experience of being a humanitarian uh, center and also your NGO, so much. Uh, uh, again, I'd like to congratulate you guys and thank you guys for your efforts, what you guys are doing. Uh, I mean, how? Uh, what? What advice do you have for people who cannot do the things as a as an NGO, but they like to help out? But they, they, they really, you know, sometimes they're, they're a little confused because you see a lot of them are having children, a lot of stress because uh, the children are at home, they're not used to it, and they are back home also doing work from home. So the change of environment is, is really, but they like to do something to help out. I've seen people, uh, you know, open like a small like table and put, take what you want and give what you want and that kind of thing. But I guess that is small things. But what would you advise them to do? I mean, uh, to help out the situation because the situation, as as you know, affects everyone. All strata of uh, society, all all you know, all levels of uh, social economic groups are affected. Okay, so uh, so I think the first thing, uh, one way you can help out is actually. So you either can do it through a physical way or you can do it through a financial way. From a financial way, I think you have heard. All the programs have uh, a monetary value. You're gonna you want to sponsor a concentrator is three thousand six hundred. You want to sponsor a laptop. It is uh, it's one thousand one hundred and fifty. If you want to help to for a family to get food, it's a hundred ringgit per bag. So those are the monetary uh, you know channels that in which. And and believe me. Uh, don't don't think that you know I'm just doing it monetarily and not really feeling. You know every person that receives that those things is have so beautiful things to say about uh, those people who have helped to make sure that those services are rendered. So it's not about me. It's not about United Six. United Six is a vehicle in which we use the public's money to serve. So it is actually the public that's serving. We are just a you know conduit. So. Truly speaking, when a, when a when a person who receives uh, has such beautiful words to say and gives so much of blessings, uh, believe me, I think the you know the the law of uh, of uh, the, the law of God will actually tell you that you know that blessings belong to the people who have supported it. So so definitely you will get the blessings. That's number one. The other way is so through donations is number one. Number two is you can also be a um, a, a volunteer. So, for example, now our medical lines, we have so many people that we are passing oximeters. Now, we actually need more volunteers to help to, if you can attach one, one volunteer to one patient, that if you can, you know, for two weeks, call the patient every day, find out how are you doing, until, you know, uncle, uh, you know, how's your oxygen level, and uh, do you need anything, other, any other help? Like, like a personal, you know, a person that you can speak to, because during this time, uh, fear is a big factor. And that people uh, actually um, feel very alone because it's become like a taboo. The minute you have COVID, nobody can come close to you. Uh, you know, people want to come in the front of your house, so don't dare come. Even after you go, after you finish your 14 days, people are very fearful to even come close to you. So it's become like a taboo mm -hmm. and uh, like a stigma that gets stick to a person who gets, uh, who gets a COVID. But we shouldn't be like that. Uh, we should be able to support them. Uh, you know, through all our channels, through a phone, even a simple, you know, message to them can really help them to keep their, their spirits high. Yeah. And number three is, obviously, uh, you know, all the all work that we do uh, depends on how much of reach we have. So if, if, the, if the listeners here can be the ambassadors of the United Sikhs who, you know, through social media, share, speak about the organization and let more people know that uh, that you know, help is available, and and and, and there's a channel that you can get help. And obviously, in the same way, uh, more people can know where they want to invest their 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 charity. Um, yeah. and, and, and and that's another way to become an ambassador of the of the organization. Yeah, Mr. Suno, uh, maybe you can outline the most important thing that y'all need right now, that y'all need right now, that 
would 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 uh, would benefit you guys that maybe uh, volunteers can help. Hmm. So, um, I, I think we need uh, not the one. I think there are two. One is uh, the top two will be uh, we require volunteers to help us on the helpline to 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 take care of patients. Number yeah, one. Right. Uh, number two will be uh, uh, donations, obviously, so that we can buy more concentrators, and those concentrators plus the oximeter can be we can reach out more people. I'll just give you an example. We receive about three hundred to four hundred calls a day, and that three hundred four hundred calls are all COVID patients who are reaching out for help. Uh, some of them are help, some of them are inquiries. You know, what do I do now? So. We need volunteers to be tagged to these families so that these families can be served. So if yes, you course. are there, if you are there out there who want to do something in the secure in the security of your home, don't have to be exposed out, but you can be of a great help to a person who's under COVID uh, quarantine. I think that is going to be very fulfilling, not only for the person who's going to be attached to it, but also for the person who's receiving the service. Yep, um, Mr. Sunil. Again, I'd like to thank you for your contributions to the society and to humanity as a whole. And what you you guys are doing in United States is really underestimated. And I wish y'all all the best. And uh, for the people who who are listening, I hope that y'all benefited from this talk. And maybe y'all can y'all can uh, join in the the efforts, either monetary or otherwise. And volunteers, as what Mr. Sunil said, and they are doing uh, a lot of good stuff uh, for our society as a well. whole. So, uh, Mr. Sunil, would you like to give us a take-home message before we we close up? So, take home um, those people in the social media. Um, keep doing uh, while you're enjoying yourself on the social media. Keep sharing uh, and keep spreading the word about those organizations that are helping others. So I'm not talking only about United States or so any other organization that's helping others. Please spread the word around. Number one. Number two is stay safe, and number three is those people who have COVID and you are at home. Uh, never, never, ever think that you are alone. Uh, we are here to support you, and uh, and in also to those people, you know, we have had an uh, increased number of uh, committed suicide on the on on the on the media recently. Please. We we don't want anybody to go hungry. We don't want anybody to commit suicide because uh, there is avenue that you can get help, and nobody, nobody, nobody is going to be pushed away. Everybody will be served. You just have to follow some criteria so that we can keep you safe as well. That's all. Uh, we have to follow some kind of a process and and also uh, some kind of requirements so that uh, we are not giving the wrong uh, the wrong support to you. Yep, I think uh, Mr. Sunil, I'd like to thank you for your for your contribution today. I think uh, it, it I think it's self-explanatory what United Seeks are doing, and I I I wish all all the best, and I'd like to thank you all for your for your work and your human your humanitarian works, and also other other uh, human your human touch especially. I wish you all all the best, and uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, to to everyone, to uh, next week we'll be having another. Uh, talk uh, with uh, uh, Dr. Raki Yadav. She's a consultant, uh, pediatrician, and we'll be talking about safety of children during the pandemic. I'd like to thank everyone. Thank you, Sunil. Thank you for joining us, and uh, hopefully you can come back and we can see you again at uh, end of the year. Maybe talk about a little sure. bit more. Life. Thank you so sure. much. For and to all the listeners, you know, please, uh, I'm, my last words is please, you know, Dr. Sanjeev is very trying to do something, trying to make sure that, you know, the all those important information reaches out to the public. Please follow his channel. Uh, give him a little bit more support so that, you know, this news and this content can go to many people. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.